Hey everyone, I made this a few days ago and today I'm going to show you how to make something similar. And before I jump into it, I just want to say that this piece was inspired by the work of Crystal Boxes on Instagram. The only thing majorly different is that mine is an animated loop. So go check out their work, they make some really cool stuff. Okay, let's go. Okay, so here we are in Blender 2.82 and let's just get started. We just have our default cube right here and we're going to use it this time. I'm just going to select it, go into edit mode and uh, alt M to merge everything at the center. So we just have one vertice right now. I'm just going to E to extrude and move that along the X axis. Uh, and I'm going to open up the side panel over here. I'm going to move that to 20. So now it's over here. I select everything, subdivide it. And I'm going to cut it 25 times. And right now we can't see it, so I'm going to come into our modifiers on the side and add a skin modifier. And what this is doing is basically taking the line and just putting a prism around it. Next, with this selected, I'm going to press Control 2 to add a subdivision surface modifier to make it a little smoother. I'm going to click Smooth Shading right here on the skin modifier. And I'm just going to collapse these. Okay, uh, Alt-Z to go into Transparent View, Tab into Edit. And if you press Control A with everything selected, um, the skin modifier lets you scale it up each vertice individually, but we're using all of them. So I'm just going to scale this on the X axis to make it a little longer. And then I'm going to Control A and Y to flatten it. And then I'm just going to Control A and scale the whole thing down. And this should keep the roughly the same proportions like that. And then I'm going to add an array modifier, but I'm going to put this at the very top. I'm going to come in here, change this to constant offset, 7 to go into top view, and I'm just going to move this on the Y as far apart as we want it. I'm going to make this pretty close. That should be good. And then I'm just going to turn this up to maybe a 50. That should be good for now. We can always turn it up later. All right, we're getting a little closer. Next thing is to add a displacement modifier, and I'm going to put this at the very top. I'm going to add a new texture right here, and just click on this Properties button right here and change this to Clouds. And the edges don't have a normal direction, I'm pretty sure. So you can change this from Normal to Z, and this should start distorting it like that. And right now, it looks like it's affecting all of them because it's looking at the first one, displacing it, and then copying it with the array. So we just need to move this to the second slot, and that should make it a little more random. All right, and we want this to be animated, so we're going to, instead of making this follow the local texture coordinates, we're going to make it follow an object, and that object is just going to be an empty that we'll add right now, plane axis. just going to put it somewhere I can see it, like there. Select our object, and then go over here, the eyedropper, you can just select your empty. So now when we move this, the displacement should move with it. And if we scale it up, the displacement should scale up also. And right now this is pretty low poly. Um, I just want it to move fast during the tutorial. I don't want it to lag or anything like that. So when we're finished, we can add some subdivisions to that. It'll look a little smoother. And in mine, you can see that the center is being affected more than its surroundings. So I'll show you how I achieved that. Okay, so you can select this, add a vertex weight edit, and I'm just gonna move that after the array. I'm going to tab into edit mode, Alt-Z to go transparent so we can see all of it. And what we need to do is add this to a vertex group. Right here, we can just add a new one. I'm just going to leave it the default name. And you want to make sure that your weight is at zero. And then click Assign. Make sure all of these are selected. So now, all of these are in this vertex group. We can come back out, go into our modifiers, and under the vertex weight, select that group. Change the falloff type to Custom, and just invert this. I've done this a few times, and I'm still not really sure why you need to do this. Um, but if you don't, then it doesn't work right. So leave a comment if you know why this is the case. And then um, add a new texture. And I'm just going to name this mask so I don't get it confused. I'm going to set this to object also. And I'm going to make a new empty for this to be controlled by. I'm going to use a sphere th for this. And just move it to the center for now. And I'm also going to name the empty mask. And then you can select that. Then we just need to go to our texture, make sure the mask is selected up here, and go to Blend. And we want to change this from linear to spherical, so it's circular. And then I believe the only thing we have to do is go back into our modifiers and make sure that the displacement 
is only affecting that vertex group. There it is. So now you can see that wherever this empty is, is being displaced. And we can scale that up and it should respond accordingly. And if you want to displace it more, you just have to change the strength of your displacement. So I'm going to set that to 5 for now. And so right now the middle is being affected and its surroundings are not being affected at all. If you want the surroundings to be affected very slightly, you can go into your mask texture right here and go under colors, click the color ramp, and just change that to B-spline. And if that's a little too much, just add a new flag. And um, you can leave it in the center, just change this color. If you make it black, it'll be like our default was before. And the lighter you turn it, the more its surroundings will be slightly affected. OK, next I'm going to set up the animation, uh, which only requires animating the empty that's controlling the displacement. So I'm just going to move that a little closer to our affected area. I'm going to move to frame 0. As you can see, it starts playing on frame 1 and ends at 250. Uh, if we put our first keyframe on 0, it'll loop a little more seamlessly. So I'm going to open up the side panel right here, insert a keyframe on rotation, go to 250, change Y to 360 so it goes all the way around, add another keyframe. And then with both frames selected down here on your timeline, T and set the interpolation to linear. And when we play it, you can see that this is animated now. And it's important that if you want this to move pretty slowly and fluidly, that your empty is pretty close to your affected area. If you move it further away, it'll move a little faster. It'll still loop, but it's a little more chaotic. So I'm just going to keep that pretty close right here. OK, and if you want this to be a little smoother, we just have to subdivide our objects a little. So tab into edit mode, and I'm just going to start subdividing maybe four times. That should be good. And when you do this, you just have to make sure to update your vertex group. So we can come in here, make sure your weight is set to zero and everything is selected, and click Assign. And so we can see it's a little smoother now. Next, we're going to work on shading. So come up to your shading tab over here. So make sure your object is selected. I'm going to switch into render view mode. We're using Eevee for this. And I'm just going to turn the gizmos off so we can see a little better. Also, make sure you have a material added to your object. And for this, I want to use an object info node. And I want to use the random color option. And as you can see, this isn't really going to work for us because we're using an array. And it treats that like one individual object. So it's just going to be one color. So to make this work, we just have to come into our modifiers over here. And with our object selected, apply the array. Make sure if you apply any of these that all of your settings are the way you want them in here. Otherwise, it's you can still update things, but it's a little harder. Next, you have to tab into edit mode with all of these selected. Make sure everything is selected in here. Press P and separate by loose parts. And now in our outliner, you can see these are all each band is a different object. And with this node now, each object is selected a random grayscale value. And so I just have our roughness all the way down because I want it to be really shiny. And to update the colors, I'm just going to add a color ramp node in here. And you can just change the color of these two flags. So for the first one, I'm just going to change it to an orangish color. So right now we have it going from orange to white. And you can change the distribution by just moving these flags around. And if you want more than one color or more than two colors, um, you can just add more flags of different values like that. But I'm going to have two for now. You can also use this random object value to change other things like the metalness or the roughness. So for instance, if you want to do that, you could just duplicate your color node, reset it with delete, plug the color into the metalness over here. And if you want this to be either black or white, but nowhere in between, you can just change this from linear to constant and mess with the white flag a little. And I think this looks good, so we're going to set our camera up. I'm going to go back into layout mode. I'm going to split our view and press 0 on one of them to make it look through the camera. And I'm just going to move our camera into a place where I like it now. And we can preview what that looks like by going into render view mode. And I added a little more color behind here so it wasn't just black. Uh, and the way I did that is I just put a plane like this just move it into place, come into your shading tab. And with our plane selected, I'm going to add a new material. I'm going to get rid of this and change it to an emission node. And you can just make this whatever color you want. 
And I also like to come into our render properties, go to color management, and change the look from none to very high contrast. And this just makes it pop a little more. And if you want to add some depth of field to this, make sure you just select your camera, click the little camera icon, go into depth of field, you can check that. Make sure your focus distance is where you want it and adjust the f-stop. You can make it something pretty low to see where it is. So right now it looks like it's focusing right here. You can just move that a little further and then turn this to whatever value you want. And so that's how I did it. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave a comment below and please consider giving me a like and subscribe. It'll help me out a bunch. If you want to see what else I'm making, follow me on Instagram. There's a link in the description. And if you follow this tutorial, tag me when you post it. I'd love to see your take on it. Okay, thanks for watching, everyone.